Hey everyone, I'm Colleen Conti, and we are so excited to have you with us today as we continue the conversation. This podcast is an opportunity for us to unpack scripture right here at the table with friends, and I am thrilled to introduce you to our teachers today. We have Pastor JT Terry. You ready? I'm JT. ready. I'm ready. What's going yeah. on, everybody? Y'all good? We're so excited good, to have you good. here for excited this conversation. To be here. Excited to be Thanks here. Thanks for joining us. Yep. And we also have Pastor Tanner Schaefer. Hello. Hey. How hey, are Tanner. you? You ready? I'm excited. Ready to dive in. <laughs> I know. This is so exciting. We are doing a series on relationships. And so we are going to do something a little different today. We don't have a specific scripture on unpack, but we are going to talk about a person Mm -hmm. and the relationships that he was in that brought him life. And so a lot of this is going to come out of Acts, but there's other scriptures as well that we're going to unpack. But we're going to talk about Paul and the people in his life that were impactful for him. Tanner, will you start us off and just talk through why do we need this conversation today? What is important about knowing the people that are in our life? Yeah. And, uh, you know, when we think about Paul and all he did, I know JT's going to share a little bit more kind of his accolades, but most of us in the Christian we know Paul was just this great man, right? Great mm-hmm. man for God. He did so many things. And when you think about greatness, all of us want to be great. Right? Yeah. All, all of us want to have grace, whether it's, I want to do great things for God. I want to be a great mom, a great dad, husband, father, businessman, business, whatever it is, we want to be great. And I think when we have that desire, a lot of times what we focus on is how do I make myself great? Mm. What books am I reading? What podcasts am I listening to? Self-help, self-help. Yeah, if I'm an athlete, what camps am I going to? What YouTube am I looking at to train? You're always thinking about how do I make myself great? And that's important. But I think the key to greatness is relationships. Mm, That's good. Who do you have in your life? And when we look at Paul, when we look at all the great things we did, what we're going to study today is the relationships that helped him get there, help him achieve that. And I'll say this, and I think you can say this, is that if you actually want to achieve something great for God, it won't happen if you don't have good relationships. Mm, wow. Like you won't be able to achieve what God has for you by yourself 100%. or in unhealthy relationships. And yep. so I think this is a really important study yeah. today to look at these healthy relationships, what they look like, mm. how can we incorporate them in our lives, how can we have them, how can we be them, yeah. and that way we can achieve what God actually has for us. And we could all work on our relationships. We can always, it's always going to help us. So I love that. I love that thought. You know, I think what you were saying, it reminds me of that thought of like, which is more important, the destination or the journey? And it's the company. Who are you walking with? And that'll tell you what direction you're going. I love that. So let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit first about Paul. You said he is, he was great. He was a great apostle, but talk to us about who Paul was. What did he do? Why do we need to know about him? I think one of the most important things, you know, because Paul was such a a great man of God, an mm-hmm. apostle, I mean, next to Jesus Christ, I mean, no one has done um, as much as Paul has done yeah. when it comes to spreading the kingdom agenda. Yeah. So when you want to go to the pinnacle and examine a person's life and see their life, you want to be able to look at the relationships that mm-hmm. they had as well to yeah. see, like you talked about, yeah. how did they get to the end? How mm-hmm. did Paul finish well? based on the relationships he had in his life. And when you think about his life, uh, you know, a lot of times you got to scramble and find a resume for people in the Bible. But Paul gives us his resume uh, in Philippians 3. He gives us his resume before Christ and after Christ. Mm -hmm. And just to give a brief history of who he was, you know, Paul talks about, you know, when it comes to circumcision, I was circumcised on the eighth day. Mm -hmm. So he said, man, I'm a true Israelite. Mm, That's good. He said, man, I came from the stock of Israel Mm -hmm. from the tribe of Benjamin. I know you, when you think about, you know, in the old Testament, when Judah and Israel split, you know, the Benjamites, they were the ones who were considered loyal. So Paul was saying, man, my religion started when I was eight days, years old. I'm from the stock of Israel. I'm from the loyal group and tribe of Benjamin. And then you also thinking about his name, Saul, you know, King Saul was the first King of Israel. Mm. And I was thinking about this on the way over here. You know, King Saul was a devout man at first and then turned into a murderer trying to kill David. Yeah. Oh. And then Saul was the opposite. That's oh, yeah. Come cool. on. He was a murderer and a persecutor and translated and was transferred to a devout man of God. That's so awesome. That was a little seed just for everybody right there. <laughs> uh, but then also he he went so he goes on with his resume. Paul says, man, when it comes to the law, I was a Pharisee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When it comes to zeal, I persecuted the church. Yeah. When it comes to righteousness, I was blameless. Mm. So what he's saying is all these things that before Christ, man, I had this resume that was boastful in the flesh. Mm. He said, when I met Christ, none of those things mattered to me because it was all about Christ and walking in him. And in his his resume afterwards, 
you know, he writes those letters to the churches and he says, I am Paul, a bond servant, yep. mm. a slave. Mm -hmm. I have been called an apostle mm -hmm. and I have been separated to the gospel of God. That's yep. good. And so Paul, he was that that persecutor. He was there when the first martyr, Stephen, mm -hmm. was uh, was persecuted and killed. Yep. And um, right after that, you know, Paul, the Bible says that he consented to Stephen's death, but he started to go inside of these houses and taking men and women out and, and taking them and putting them into prison. Mm -hmm. And so one day he was like, man, I'm finna go to Damascus because every, all the Christians have been spread it out. I'm finna go to Damascus with these letters to take all these Christians that are Nazarenes, as he called them, and then throw them into prison. Yeah. And as he was going to Damascus, oh, here we go. One of the greatest encounters that we all have witnessed in the Word of God happened, and this light shined upon him. And Paul, he was Saul. Then he was literally knocked off his high horse, mm -hmm. yeah. literally and literally, figuratively. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's I heard good. Pastor Dick said, "Man, he was knocked out his, his horse so bad." It knocked the S off his name and turned it to a P. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is what Paul's conversion was. Yeah. And Jesus say, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Oh, yeah. wow, yeah. And then Tanner, man, if you want to go a little bit further than that and talk about, you know, what happened after this encounter. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I do think like, okay, Paul, we talked about his accolade is great. We think about what happened before this moment, yeah. this Damascus road encounter, like it gives hope that God can change everything in your life in a moment. Yeah. You know, people I think can say, well, forget about my relationships. I can't even be used by God. Oh, it doesn't mm. matter about great relationships. I can't yep. even do things great because of what I've done. But when you have an encounter with God and yes. God gets involved, Absolutely. he can change everything. And yeah. so he has this moment. I think one of the cool things is he's blinded, right? He's, he can't see. He's got to yeah. be led away. And he spends some time. We don't know a ton about what all said. All we know is that God says that he told him how much he's going to suffer. And so you can yeah. you just imagine, right? You have this encounter. Your whole life has changed because yeah. you're like, this This is real. This Jesus guy is yeah. real. I can't see. And now as I'm spending time sitting here, God's just telling me all the things I'm about to suffer. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, okay, this yeah. is real. You know, I think yeah. we think sometimes, oh, I should be Christian, have my house and family, Absolutely. whatever. And he's sitting there going, hey, you're going to be persecuted. Yeah. You're, the, I'm, I've shown you the things you're going to go, but think about his experience was so great and so real. He was willing to do it. Yeah. yeah. You know, he was willing to say yes to the call 100%. because of the, the experience with God being so real. And I 100%. love that because you guys talked about, I mean, we talk about Paul as being great. Yeah. yeah. Paul talks about being great because of suffering. Absolutely. Yeah. That's so powerful. So then mm -hmm. Paul gets to this house, right? Yep. And he's mm -hmm. blinded. And now there's like a different, it's like a scene switch yep. in yeah. Acts. Yeah. And in Acts 10, is it Acts 10? Yeah. He, uh, Acts 9, Acts 9. Yeah. 10 through 19, there's a, a guy that comes on the scene mm -hmm. who gets a word for mm -hmm. now Paul, yeah. Ananias, the yeah. first relationship that we encounter with Paul. Mm -hmm. So talk yeah. to me about Ananias. What was the purpose of him being in Paul's life? What effect did he have on Paul? Let's talk through that. Yeah. And you got to think, just imagine you're just praying one day, you hear the voice of God that you recognize because you do hear God's voice. Mm -hmm. And he says, hey, remember that guy that's been murdering people? Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, I don't like that guy. He's like, no, no, you're going to go talk to him. Yeah. And you're like, yep. no, you know, <laughs> you start to question, okay, am I hearing? Like, if I heard this wrong, I'm dead. Yep. Yeah. You know? like, this, is, this isn't like, oh, let's go see. And yeah. This is if I, if this isn't Surely God, I'm talking mm -hmm. to myself. Yeah, this is not. I, I am yeah. going to die. And, and so God talks to Ananias and says, hey, I need you to go. I've shown uh, Saul what he's going to suffer. Yeah. Uh, you need to go kind of confirm everything. Yeah. And, yeah. and Ananias is going to go, he's going to go there, he's going to pray, the scales are going to fall off, and this is going to start Paul's journey. Oh, wow. And thinking about the relationship, the thing about Ananias is he's just a few verses long, right? Yeah. This relationship with Paul is very brief, it's a moment, and then it's gone. And you think, oh, that's what a weird relationship to start with, right? Mm -hmm. and especially we're talking about relationships. What is an Ananias relationship? Because it, yeah. it is someone who is kind of in your life for a moment and gone. But yeah. the mm -hmm. purpose of an Ananias relationship is someone to spur you on mm -hmm. to the call that God has for you. Absolutely. To oh, come wow. in, they can either confirm yeah. the call or they can help spur you along when you get kind of discouraged or defeated. Absolutely. And so God sends us Ananias, yeah. if you can pluralize that, yeah, exactly. when we need it. And, and I think about even my own life. I, I went to LSU 
to be an engineer. Yeah. So I'm my freshman year, I'm crushing it. I'm uh -huh. loving engineering. Yeah. All of a sudden I have an encounter and I'm like, I think I'm supposed to go into ministry. Wow. And um, all I can think about is ministry doesn't pay what engineering pays. <laughs> yeah, that's and I'm like, my <laughs> life is like all my life plans. Yeah. Everything I have is has to go out the window if this is real. And so I'm I'm going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Like, is this God? Is it not God? I'm trying to be like Gideon, Lord, here's a fleece, do something. Yeah. I need, Prove it. I need Prove a it twice sign. Over, yeah. And I keep thinking, God, I just need some I need someone to tell me. Yeah. And one day after church, where church is over, is ending. Like they, they sent us home, we're about to walk away. And a lady I'd never met before in my entire life taps me on the shoulder and is like, hey, you have a call of God in your life. You need to walk on it. Like walk wow. in. And I went, okay. And I remember like I, I shook her hand and turned to my parents like, hey, we need to have lunch. I got to talk to you because yeah. my life's changing. Wow. Um, and so like God even sent me. And, so cool. and I think we were you had kind of a similar, you had a moment where God yeah. sent you someone in Absolutely, that Absolutely, man. When you, when you look at, you know, Ananias got a vision and Saul got a vision mm, as well. That's good. And Ananias got a vision of seeing Saul and Saul got a vision that Ananias would come pray for him. So just as you said, there was a confirmation there. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first got to uh, HPC around four and a half, five years ago, didn't know anybody. Uh, Pastor Chris invited me to a, a prayer uh, group on Fridays we yeah. used to go to, and I'm looking around. You got Tanner and Pastor Mike and Derek Foster, and and everybody knows that you know Derek is a, is has been instrumental in my life. And at that time, I didn't know him, but God told me that first day. He said, "I need you to get connected with him," mm. and I'm like. I ain't finna tell this dude nothing, You're right? <laughs> and so uh, months go by, and we used to have uh, first Saturday, the mm -hmm. prayer on, yeah. on, on the first Saturdays, and we just started talking, and all of a sudden that boldness just came up, and I told him, I said, hey, man, uh, God told me to get connected with you. And he said, I'm glad God told you that because he told me the same thing, and I wasn't going to say anything to you as well. <laughs> and I, I just love that because it goes back to the principle. Mm -hmm. God showed it to me. And he showed it to him yeah. when God has a divine ordained kingdom relationship for you, That's good. he will show it to you yeah. and that person. And it's up to us to be obedient That's and walking good. in it. I love yeah. that. Mm. That's yeah. really cool. And, um, you know, we, we all need an Ananias. Absolutely. And it's not just like, you know, for me, it was at the very beginning, but there have been people and even people I've know closely, but they had, I guess you could call them Ananias moments where yeah. they you know, through the Spirit said something to me to help mm -hmm. me keep going Absolutely. when I'm discouraged or if I have another decision, they have that moment. So we all need an Ananias. And Absolutely. God, I believe when you pray, God brings it. But if you think about it, if we all need an Ananias, yeah. that means everyone needs an Ananias. Everyone needs one. That means we should try to be an Ananias. Yeah. That's so you, you know, good. We, yeah, we need to be that. on the lookout of, one, tune in to God, but on the lookout for people we can have those moments with. Yeah. And so, JT, I kind of want you to speak into this. How can we be an Ananias for people? Absolutely. Man, it's a couple of steps. I mean, there's no one size fits all, but yeah. it's a couple of principles that we can yeah. um, become that Ananias. The first one is Ananias was, he heard God's voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he was able to be quiet and still, mm -hmm. you know, just as James says, man, he was quick to listen. Mm -hmm. That's good. Now, just as you mentioned, Tanner, he told him about Saul and he's like, man, I know this dude, this yeah. dude be killing people, but he still was quick to listen to mm -hmm. what That's God so had good. to say yeah, to him. I love yeah. it. And so he heard God's voice, but as a step further than hearing God's voice, is being obedient. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gotta be yeah. obedient. Yeah, oh, that, absolutely. Because he could have awesome. heard what God told him, but if he didn't stay take that step and walk by faith and not by sight, then he wouldn't have been obedient. Mm -hmm. And then also the next thing that we could do is just not be afraid to tell the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Bible talks about how Jesus Christ was grace and truth personified. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I believe Ananias or how we can be an Ananias is operating a hundred percent in that grace, being able to be graceful yeah. and merciful to people, mm -hmm. but also being willing to tell the yeah. truth. That's good. And then the last thing is that, Ananias came to Paul in his darkest moments. Yeah. Mm. And I love this because when Ananias came to Paul, he was blinded. So he yeah. couldn't see. And then later on in Acts 26, you know, the Bible talks about how Paul was going to be this one to open up the eyes of the Gentiles. Mm. Yeah. And so the prerequisite for Paul being able to open up the eyes of the Gentiles mm -hmm. was an Ananias coming in the darkest moments of yeah. his so life good. to help open up his eyes and the scales falls yeah. off. So 
just hearing God's voice, being obedient to God's voice, uh, just making sure that we tell the truth in grace, mm -hmm. uh, but then also in the darkest moments, yeah. be uh, being there for yeah. people. Yeah, That's gotta, really yeah. good. I yeah. love yeah. that. We got to meet that. people where they oh, are. Yeah, you can't absolutely. be afraid to absolutely. go into their, you know, the place where it is yep. dark and yeah. it is hard. It's hardship. Yep. Like we need to look for those people. 100%. I think sometimes we only want to look for people who have it all. I want to say yep. a word to... JD, he's got it all together, but yeah. like, we, we need to say, who can I encourage? Who looks discouraged? Absolutely. How can I go encourage All right, them? so we're about to talk about encouragement. Oh, so on. let's yeah, go to the next relationship. You said me. that. <laughs> so we're going to talk about oh. Barnabas. Oh, let's yeah. talk about the next relationship mm. that Paul encounters. And man, he needed a Barnabas. He so let's Barnabas. talk through mm -hmm. who was Barnabas? What is this relationship in Acts? Mm -hmm. They took a long journey together. They're they a little did. bit longer than the Ananias. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. let's talk about Barnabas. Who was he and why do we need a Barnabas? Well, just as we just mentioned, you know, Barnabas is that encourager, mm -hmm. yeah. that person that help edifies you. And if we would just use in terms, vouch for you. Because yeah. that's, oh, that's what he good. did for yeah. Paul. Mm -hmm. um, we all know we just mentioned Paul's history, but Barnabas, even when you look at his name, you know, back in the biblical days, a person's name was identified by their character. Yeah, yeah. that's And, good. you know, his name in Aramaic means son of prophet, but in the Greek it means son of encouragement. Mm. Yeah. So he was an encourager to Paul because yeah. right after his conversion, People were scared of him. Oh, yeah. Like, man, don't bring that dude no I way near us. I would be too, man. Exactly, because last week he was just trying yeah. to put yeah. us in jail. Trying to infiltrate. Exactly, like, exactly. <laughs> man, so that, and, and then when, when, when Saul needed someone to just stand in the gap for mm. him, yeah. to encourage him and edify him and vouch for him, Barnabas was that guy. Yeah. He yeah. went to the other apostles and he said, look, I know last week he was just trying to put us in jail, yeah. in prison, but this week... He has had an encounter with Christ, and now he's preaching the way. Yeah. He's teaching the things concerning Christ and the kingdom of God. Yeah. So, man, that's, that's that's the beginning stages of Barnabas, man. Him and Paul went on many different uh, missionary trips, man. But I know, yeah. Tanner, you want to speak a little bit more on that? Yeah, you know, think about encouragers, not just someone who can encourage you in a moment, Absolutely. but stick with you yeah. Yeah. while you're walking through things and continually encourage with yeah. you. Even when things get hard, you know, yeah. even when things aren't going the right way, to be able to, I for me, I've always operated better when I knew someone's in my corner, no matter yeah, what. That's good. Right, no matter if I was on a high or a low, someone who was with me. And again, you talk about we're not just looking for people to encourage who already got it going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to encourage people who are walking through hard times as mm -hmm. well. And yeah. so I think. You know, when it comes to relationships, right, faithful is one of the best things I think you can be That's called good, as yeah. a friend, but faithful uh, is something you want your friends to be. They mm. just are with you, yeah. right, through thick and thin, encouraging you, yeah. encouraging the call of God in your life, speaking truth and love. Say, hey, I'm going to encourage you by telling you the truth and say, this is not the way to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes that's encouragement, Absolutely. right? Saying, hey, you do have a call God in your life and this isn't walking yeah. in that. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you the truth because I don't like what I see because I know what God has in you and I'm going to encourage you that way. Absolutely. And then if that person you know, goes away to not just say, oh, I'm done with them, but hey, I'm going to encourage you back. Yeah. I think that's another way you that's encourage awesome. someone. Yeah. You encourage someone back to the relationship with Jesus, Absolutely. back to where they need to go. You can encourage them back to the right uh, path for their lives. And so yeah. sticking with them, and that's yeah. like, that's important. Barnabas mm -hmm. was important. very committed to his his relationships. Very yeah. committed. Very and committed. It, he offered Paul a lot of credibility. Like he, he did. invited yeah. him into rooms that Paul would not have gotten into yeah. without yeah. him. Love that. Yeah. You know, I yeah. think that's really cool. I think Barnabas even like deferred to him. Like when he knew, yeah. man, Paul's the next big thing. Yeah. yeah. I, it's time for our roles to switch. I'm going to give you the Absolutely. baton. I think that's really yeah. cool. I hear Pastor Mike talk about all the time. We joke about how some people come into our congregation and arena and they see some people from their previous or, or past life. Yeah. And they're mm -hmm. like, man, what you doing in here? Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, that happens a lot. But Barnabas was that guy to, when someone says that, he steps in and he's like, yeah, I know what that person used to live like or what they yeah. used to do or say and then how their character was back then, but this is how they are now. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, I, and yeah. I love that. And don't yeah. be afraid to help someone early in their journey. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You know, you, you have this Ananias who comes and kind of commissions Paul, and then Barnabas steps in and kind of takes him, says, hey, let's do this. Yeah. yeah. And it, again, you talk about like fresh from killing people, fresh yeah. from being the scary guy on the block. Yeah. And Barnes said, like, hey, let's let's do this. And I mm -hmm. think 
sometimes we wait for people to get polished. And it's yeah. like, oh, I'll, now I'll take now you under I'll my take, wing. Absolutely. But he's like, hey, let's do this. Mm-hmm. God's spoken something to me. I know you're the real deal. There's something on you. Let's do this together. And then you say the ability to let them go, that's that's huge yeah. as well. But being able to take someone in their early moments when yeah. they don't have it all figured out, yeah. when they're still really rough and mm-hmm. raw and not be scared of that. Yeah. Right? They're going to say yeah. things. They're going to make things awkward. You're going to yeah. bring them to spaces where everybody knows how to act and they won't know how to Absolutely. act. And they're going to, I mean, you read Paul, he pushes the buttons of Peter. Like he's yeah. just, he, like all he's these people it. and he's just coming in he's just like rough and raw and they're calling things out. Like, yeah. whoa, easy. easy. No, yeah. so yeah. you got to get those people because God's using those people. Mm-hmm. You don't want to turn them aside because they're a little rough on the edges. You want to bring them in. Yeah, oh, that's, that's really yeah. good. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So mm. how do we, do we, how do we be a Barnabas? How do we, you know, have Barnabases? Who do we look for? These encouragers, these people who stand with us. You said uh-huh. faithful, mm-hmm. loyal, yep. bring us into rooms we may not get to in our own, you 100%. know, s- speak to our, who we are instead mm-hmm. of who we were. Yeah. I love that. It seems like Barnabas was a, a good one for Paul to have. He definitely was. Oh, yeah. Oh, very yeah. cool. Okay, next one we're going to move on to is Timothy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love I love, I love a good Timothy. Oh, yeah. So yeah. he's in Acts 16, um, but Paul actually writes a lot of letters to him, too. Yeah. yeah. Talk to me about who Paul was, who yeah. Timothy was, and yeah. who Paul was to him, and the relationship they had, and how do we need and be a Timothy? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I love this relationship. I think this is probably the most crucial relationship that is missed mm-hmm. in Christian living. Like, mm. I think this is the one that's most needed yeah. to continue God's plan, yeah. but it's that. the one that we probably do worse. Yeah. Mm. And this, if I think if we got, if we all got this relationship right, yeah. this mentor type relationship, mm. and then we all did this, I think we would see the church go to the next level. That's good. And I think uh, when you look at the culture and you look at, how crazy it is. I think it's easy to stand back and look and go, look what happened. But I think it's a result of not very many Pauls going after Timothy's mm, and having this good. mutual relationship. So who yeah. is Timothy? Timothy <laughs> was a guy Paul's not related to him. Uh, it, he's not even uh, fully Jewish. Paul kind of just comes to a relationship with him. He finds him, mentors him. And then next thing you know, he's pastoring one of the biggest churches yeah. that's at the time, you wow. know, this just man of God with the spirit. You, you go read all... Uh, the different things said about him. He's yeah. got this gift that's fanned into flame. Yeah, he, yeah. He's got a, a mom and a grandma who prays for him. He's got these people, yeah. and Paul just takes him under his wing. And uh, the scripture eventually says he uh, it's, he's like a son so, to him. That's like awesome. he, that's the kind of relationship that he has. It's more yeah. than just a friend. He has so almost adopted him mm-hmm. in a sense of a spiritual father to a spiritual son, and he basically pours into him yeah. and then watches as he goes and does great things and has so much trust in him that he'll, in some of his letters, say, hey, I'm sending Timothy to you. Wow. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. He, he's going yeah. on my behalf. Listen to him because yep. if he says it, I'm saying it. Like That's this good. This kind of relationship. Yeah, and and so it's this mentor relationship of someone older in the faith who is being used by God to find someone younger in the faith and that God says, hey, I want you to develop. I want you to cultivate. Mm-hmm. I want you to speak into. I want you to fan into flame the gifts that's on him. And I want you I to send that. him out. out. And we need, we need that. that. We have to, have to, yeah. have to do that. Yeah. You know, hopefully we have that. Yeah. You know, with this relationship, if if we're Timothy's, yeah. God, if we pray, will send us a Paul. Mm-hmm. Like Absolutely. we have to pray. It's a lot harder to find, and that's why I think it doesn't. Because it's if you want a Paul, that's hard to find than yeah. if you're a Paul and need to go find a Timothy. Yeah. Mm. And so, you, can you? Sorry to interrupt yeah. this because I just want to get into our worlds where we actually yeah. live right yeah. here. So, like, you're freshly saved. I mean, yeah. maybe, maybe you are 20, maybe you are 50, and you're fresh in the faith. Yeah. How do you do that? How do you just walk up to somebody and be like, "Hey, will you be my Paul?" Or, "Hey, I'm I'm Paul." I, can you, I need I need to be I need you to be my Timothy. Like, yeah. Yeah. how do you actually? That feels a little awkward. How do you do that? <laughs> I, I think I think that God knows where we are, mm-hmm. Colleen. At times, like you think about Saul when he went to you know the street called Straight when he was in that house, he didn't have all this theology. Yeah, he didn't know anything <laughs> about the. I mean, I know he had the theology because he was a Pharisee. Yeah, but he didn't have what God was going to reveal to him about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm, that's good. So he didn't have all this, this this deep theology yet, but what he did was God had a call on his life mm-hmm. and he spoke some things to him in a way that Saul could understand it 
and he had somebody that was divinely connected with him. So I really just say, just keep at it. Don't leave the spaces or environments. Um, Don't leave fellowship. Yeah. God, because he cares so much about the relationships in your life, I do believe that the spirit of God will connect you in those infant and baby stages. That's good. Now, after you get connected with who you need to be connected with, it's on us to continue to pursue stick with and it. have that desire That's and good. stick with it. So I do believe because God knows where we at in those beginning infant yeah. stages that he will do a little bit more of the work mm-hmm. yeah. uh, so that we can get connected to who we need to get connected like to. Yeah, yeah, I think if you're in the right places. Right places, baby. And with the right heart, yeah. and you're, pr- you're actively praying, God, I need this in my life. God will send that. And as long as someone on the other end is obedient, is obedient? which we got yeah, to talk yeah, about, yeah, yeah. 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 we got to talk yeah. about that. Obedience That's why we have to be is. obedient because being a Paul to a Timothy is yeah. an answered prayer. It is. Yeah. You know, some, there are Timothys who are praying desperate for Pauls, and they Pauls are. need to show up. And I know you're going to talk about yeah. what it looks like to be a Paul. Like, tell, oh, yeah. how do we tell us how to do that? Well, the first thing that you have to do is uh, you have to seek out. Yeah, mm. to Timothy. Mm-hmm. You know, and the Great Commission is to make disciples. Yeah, come on. Um, so Paul, you think about it, we were praying for Paul's, but Paul actually had a Barnabas before he was a Paul. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, so Paul was just continuing what Jesus had laid down as a That's disciple good. mandate. Yeah. And so we pray, we seek uh, after some Timothys to go mm-hmm. um, and to disciple them. And then once you find these Timothys, uh, what you have to do is, like you talked about, cultivate them. Mm-hmm. Um, the Timothy has to have desire as well, mm-hmm. uh, because the 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 actual you know evidence of desire is pursuit. Mm. Yeah. So I, as a Paul, have to pursue, and then them as a Timothy have to pursue as well. So mm-hmm. we have to be a mutual yeah. pursuit. It, yeah, absolutely. So you pray, you seek after it, and then you cultivate that relationship, and then you have that pursuit. And then you also, as Paul always told Timothy, he said, flame, or fan up that flame that's within you, that inner fire, stir up the gift that's inside of you, Mm -hmm. you know, that's been given to you by the Holy Spirit, by the laying of hands. So as a Paul, we have to be ones to help discern the gift that are inside the Timothy, and then also be the ones to help cultivate that gift, to put them in opportunities and places so that their gifts can be, uh, because they can flourish and thrive. And then the last thing is to uh, not be upset when a Timothy may pass you up. Um, I know Jesus said, you know, a, a, a student would not be greater than their teacher or a slave greater than their master. That was him. None of us would be greater <laughs> than Jesus. Yeah. But when it comes to us discipling, you may be discipling someone who will spiritually go further than you. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest things that we fail in in the body of Christ is secession and mentorship, mm-hmm. as you mentioned. Yeah. You know, all throughout the Bible, you know, we see Israel fail because at certain seasons there was not a leader. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you see that season between Moses and Joshua. Moses had mentor mm-hmm. Joshua. Mm-hmm. But after Joshua, there was no, there was no one else. Yeah. And Israel suffered because Darkness of that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I just think that we have to have that mindset like, man, I want this young man or young lady to go further than me. That's good. And the way that I pursue them is I'm going to teach them everything that I know and then allow the Spirit of God to go greater than I actually can. Yeah. I, I love that. Mm-hmm. I think you you know if your heart is right if you want them to go further oh, yeah. than you. Mm-hmm. Because if you think kingdom, yep. right, them going further than you yep. is the best thing that could ever happen for the kingdom, 100%. right? For mm-hmm. people getting saved. Yeah. Yep. And so if my heart is for the kingdom, yep. like then, man, I hope I everyone I touch yep. goes further than me. I hope That's everyone awesome. preaches better than me. I hope everyone teaches more than me. I yep. hope everyone runs the business better than me and it impacts more people for the God. Yep. Like whatever I'm doing, I hope the person coming after me can do it greater and take it further That's because awesome. then more people get impacted. I love that. Yeah. I love that it stirs on mentorship that, that we want to yeah. encourage. And mm-hmm. that the, the, the responsibility is on the older. You know, I think about, yeah. I don't know where the scripture is, but the older women to, to pour into the younger yeah. women or yeah. the older, older men, men to pour into the younger yeah. men, you know, mm-hmm. that we really need to g- run after them because the next generation needs the wisdom, needs the, they, do. they got the fresh 
rev and the yep. fresh relevancy, yeah. but they need the wisdom. And so it's on us to do that. Okay. Last relationship. Yes, absolutely. This yes. one's a fun one. It's an intense one, but here yep. we go. John Mark. Uh, John Mark, who was he? I mean, there was some conflict that happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can we just real quick unpack John Mark yeah. and why do we need a John Mark? Well, you know, it doesn't talk about much of the situation that happened, but uh, there was a, a missionary trip mm-hmm. that Paul, Barnabas, and John Mark was on. And there's many different speculations and things that uh, that we say that happened. Uh, but long story short, John Mark left them boys. He mm-hmm. left them. They were on a missionary trip and he left them. And there came another time to go on a missionary trip and Paul and Barnabas got into a heated disagreement yeah. yep. because Barnabas said, look, I want to bring John Mark on this missionary trip. Yep. And he was his cousin, wasn't he? Was he was his cousin. Okay. Yep. So my he's family. like, man, I want to bring, bring my, my family. Bring my blood. Yeah. Folks, he's encouraging. Right? Exactly. I, don't, I, don't, I stay by my people. Yep. I'm faithful. And so he committed to those relationships. Yeah. He said, man, I want to bring my cousin on this trip. And Paul is like, no, I don't trust him. Yeah. You know, and I and I look at this and people may say Paul was right. People may say Barnabas was right. I think there's a little bit of truth in both of them. The reason why I say Paul is because, you know, this is the beginning of the church. This is the mm. foundational seed. Yeah. So going on a missionary trip, if you don't have a person there that you can likely trust, it'll be tough when you face persecution. Yeah. yeah. But on the other end with the Barnabas, having that grace, because Paul— I stood in the gap for you Mm. when nobody else did. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you see a character flaw in John Mark, it was one in you first. Yeah. Yeah. And so let's have the same grace and the same love Mm -hmm. uh, to to, to redeem him. So the John Mark represents someone in our lives that we need to have a redemptive relationship with Mm. and forgive. That's good. You know, I always say, you know, the seed of healing is confrontation. Mm. In order for us to heal... We have to confront some things in a healthy way That's in the good. kingdom of yeah. God. Yeah. And I think we shy away from that. Um, and then long story short, later on, Paul ended up writing in Colossians at the end of the book. He said, man, Mark, who was Barnabas' cousin, and he named other people. He said, these are some trusted fellow workers That's in the kingdom cool. of God. Yeah. So it. you see God bring restoration to that divine relationship. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. no matter who is right. God uses that yep. conflict to bring about some good redemptive things like Absolutely. learning forgiveness. And there's a powerful one that John Mark wrote the book of Mark, he wrote right? The book of Mark. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I think that's the coolest. Full redemption. Like, full yeah. Redemption full redemption. Story. And like we're reading his gospel message. I Absolutely. mean, that's powerful it is. that God yeah. will use even conflict. So it's yep. important to lean into that conflict because you never know how never God's going to use yeah. that. A man that someone else said they couldn't trust, God could trust. Him. Mm, yeah. That's mm. cool. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Any any last thoughts? Any last takeaways about John Mark? About any other relationship? As we close out, what are what are some of your thoughts about people today having those relationships? I just think that you know, Tanner, you kind of mentioned it earlier in the uh, in the podcast. The quality of a person's life is truly dependent upon yeah. who they call friend mm-hmm. or who they have intimately in their lives. And yeah. a lot of times, when it comes to mentors and people who are spiritually ahead of us. You know, a lot of times these people are not going to be your best friend because Mm. your best friend could simply just accept you for who you are. But these people love you too much to keep you where you are. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and so I don't want us to get uncomfortable and then shy away from these relationships because they get uncomfortable and they get painful Mm -hmm. and they get challenging. But as long as we lead people with love and with grace and with truth, and is reciprocated in the proper heart posture, I think we'll start to see an explosion in the body of Christ of great mentorship and relationships. And I just encourage people, evaluate your relationships, see maybe where you're lacking, you know, and then pray for what you're lacking. You know, if if you have a mark and you go forgive and restore, ask God to help. If you need an encourager, if you need someone to mentor, if you need someone just to be with you, pray. God will send them. And then he he can restore. I don't want you to feel like I don't have any of these. That's fine. Yeah. Paul started with none started of these. With and zero. God brought him through so he he can bring these people for you. That's so awesome. I love that. Yeah. That's a great way to end. It's just talking yes. through, hey, as we look through relationships, God's yeah. gonna, God wants the very best yeah. for us. You know, he he brought the greatest relationship through Jesus Christ. And yeah. so because right. of that, because of Jesus, we can have a relationship with one yep. another and 100%. we can challenge and encourage and yeah. and edify and build up and 
yeah. go through conflict with each other because of what Christ did for us. Amen. That's so awesome. So powerful. What a, what a great way to end as we just had a conversation at the table together. I loved it. It was so fun. I hope that you enjoyed as we continue the conversation right here every week. Join us back next week. Um, we're so grateful that you took the time to have the conversation with us. Make sure you continue the conversation in your small groups, with your family, with your friends. Evaluate your relationships. Yeah. Think about yeah. what you're missing and who you need to have relationship with and go be encouraged today. We'll see you back here at the table. <laughs>